Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm a programmer and an artist, and today I wanted to do something a little bit different. I have a script here that I jot every random idea I have down in, and I pulled a few of the more useful things out of that and made an add-on out of them. Um, because, because funnily enough, the most replayed part of my first video about uh, Curve to Mesh was when I searched for random seed. Or randomized seeds in the search menu, which is my own operator that I made because I wanted a way to do that. Um, so that's one thing that's in this. It um, what that does is it looks for a property on all the modifiers on the selected objects. You can have multiple selected, and you can randomize the seeds for those. They'll each get a different value. Each object will get a different value, and it just looks for properties in the modifiers named seed, either uppercase or, or lowercase. Another operator I have, um, I don't know if you've run into this a lot, where you have add a bunch of geometry node setups as modifiers on an object, but they're all just named geometry nodes. So I have an operator that renames all the modifier names to match their geometry node names. And it also works if you have... Um, these are normally all named correctly anyway, but it will also rename normal modifiers to be whatever their type is. Another operator it has is the get material textures operator, which is super useful if you're just using standard PBR textures on a material. So you can see I have the stone brick 7 textures here, which are have PBR types. Um, as long as your textures share a base name, so these are all stone brick 7 textures, and then that's followed by an underscore, and then the type of map that it is, so this base color type, height type, metallic type. Once you have just the diffuse texture in there, you can run the get material textures operator, and it will bring in the rest of the textures in that set and connect them all to the appropriate sockets. Um, if it has a normal texture, it'll connect that to the normal. If it has a height texture or a bump texture, it will connect it to the bump node, but you'll have to connect the normal from that to the normal. Um, it'll also add a scale node and a U and connect them all to that in the UV map. Um, you could swap this. You could swap this with a vector transform node if you want. I just prefer the scale because it's smaller, and that's usually all I want to do. This also works. It matches everything by lookup with names, so it works whether your textures are called base color or diffuse or albedo or whatever. And it should also work on. Um, It'll, it, if you have your, a custom shader instead of the regular principle, that should still work as well. Whatever node is connected to the output node, that's the that's the node it will assume is the shader. So if we run this again, it should connect it all up to this one just as well. It will also, if you have, let me just rename this. If you have a normal map, if you have a normal map and you run get material textures, it will detect if the the normal input on the shader is a color socket or a vector socket. If it's a color socket, it'll, it'll just plug the color in directly because it assumes that the normal map node is contained inside the shader. If you instead have the regular principal shader, which has a vector normal socket, then it will when you do get material textures, it will add the normal map node in for you. It also has an operator called bridge node sockets, which I honestly don't use that often, but what it does is if you select two nodes, you can run bridge node sockets and it'll match all the sockets by name and connect them. It's honestly not as useful as it might seem because usually there's um, all your sockets have different names, but it's there and sometimes it's useful if you want to chain a bunch of nodes together, I guess. Another operator it has, which can be super useful if you're doing some retopology or something, is the snap to near faces operator, which just does your standard um, snapping to faces, but without needing to set it all up in the snap settings. It's honestly super useful because if you do have the snap on, then when you try to move, everything snaps and does weird things. So I prefer to have it off, 
move move it freely, and then once I have it positioned approximately where I want it, snap it to the faces. And you can add that to your quick favorites or something as well. Also, all of, so all of these um, operators you can right click, add it to quick fri add it to quick favorites, um, and then you can also bind it with, to a hotkey in the preferences. The final operator I have has to do with vertex groups, and it's especially useful if you're doing some rigging or something, um, especially if you've used the data transfer modifier to copy vertex groups from a, a base mesh to like some clothing or something. You can end up, maybe it's just a shirt, well you end up with vertex groups for the legs and the feet and the hands and you know all the face groups as well. So it's just if you have a ton of groups in here, Blender doesn't really have a lot of options to work with a lot of vertex groups at once. Um, you can like remove individual groups. You can do some things on the selected vertices per group. But um, so if these vertices are only assigned to a few of these groups, then um, then the operator is called clean vertex groups, and it will go through and remove any vertices from groups if they have a weight of zero, and then it'll remove any groups that don't have any vertices in them. So then we'll end up with the three I assigned it to, but not the rest of them. So like I said, they're all kind of random and do different things, but but I think they're all useful operators and I use most of them quite a bit. I don't really use the bridge node groups one, but that's just because I don't usually have node groups with a bunch of sockets that have the same names. Um, so like I said, it's a random collection of operators, but they're available on my Gumroad page. You can get them for free. And then there's a documentation page I made that just briefly describes what they do. I also included on the download page um, an empty add-on script. It's just a it's a script. If you put it in your Blender scripts directory, um, which would be Blender 3.5 Blender 3.5 slash scripts slash add-ons, it'll show up in the preferences and you can select it um, and it's just an empty script that has a an operator in it that doesn't do it it um, lets you move an object around but um, it's all set up to, to register the class for the operator and let you add more so you could copy this operator here and add another one if you really want to take blender to the next level I'd encourage you to give it a shot and try to make your own add-on just to have a place where you can go and write little macros and things to automate processes that would take you a long time to do manually. Um, the reason I recommend doing it in an add-on is because you'll have it available to, to use once you've made it once, you'll be able to reuse it in any Blender file. If you make a script, you have to open up the script and run it every time you want to do it. And and that's not just not as flexible as being able to use the search menu. If you don't want to try out that script, I think there's also, if you go to the text editor in Blender and go to templates, I think there's a template for an add-on in here somewhere. So anyway, I'd recommend giving it a shot, trying to make your own add-on, because if, if you can do it, uh, it unlocks a ton of possibilities for making Blender more useful, and um, it just gives you a place where you can scribble down any idea you have of an operator that would be useful or make something faster or easier to use or anything like that. So that's all for this one. Probably a pretty short one, but I um, just wanted to show you that. I've got more stuff coming, working on it, um, as far as geometry nodes go, but um, they're not quite ready yet. So that's all I've got for now. Thanks for watching.